Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that YouTube dial and finding my channel and enjoying my pleasure in exploring the wide world of pens. And yes, it is a very wide world. And you see a pen in front of you. One might call it a novelty pen. I uh, call it a pen. It's certainly unique. In all the pens that I have, and considering how many pens I have, finding a unique pen is a rare thing. So here comes my hands. And as you can see, it certainly is a small, petite pen. And we'll need to zoom out in order to just put it in perspective. Here's an X159 from Jinhao, and I think you can definitely understand how small this bowling pin pen is and that's why you might call it a novelty but I think it's pretty cool it's nice design on the clip nice chrome plating there's some uh, you know ink painted on there and we'll give you the translation of that Chinese, at least as far as Google understood it. And a nice chrome end here at the bottom, which is very flat, and it does stand up on that end. It's a pull-off cap. Pulls off fairly easily, a little bit too easily. And we'll see what I may say is one of the smallest, if not the smallest nib I've ever seen, certainly on a pen made in this century. And that is really cool. And it could be an ebonite feed. I had to take a phone call, but we're back. Yeah, and I think it is a hard rubber ebonite feed. Who knows when this pen could have been made? My guess is 90s. Not really the 80s, but could be. And if in the, this century, probably in the early uh, 2000s, I don't consider it to be a recent production item. Hey, what's the filling system? Well, the barrel unscrews, and we'll see. A lot of turns. An aerometric filler, which makes Kent's, considering how small this pen is, this is probably the most efficient I'm not a cartridge person. I know a lot of people do like them, and a lot of people hate these aerometric fillers, but to me, they're fine. They work. And there's really not an option there. As you can see, if you remove the sleeve, it's pretty much part of the design. But that's, I'm fine with that. So we're going to flush this out. And think of a suitable link to go into a bowling pin pen. Uh, I'll find one. Let's look inside and see how this pen is constructed. Now there's a clutch ring inside that cap and it looks like the top has a liner so that small nib might hold up pretty well. Looks like there's a brass insert inside of this metal barrel that they've threaded to attach the section. All in all, I'm impressed. Yeah, there's a lot of brass in there. Has a decent weight to it. It passes the LED test very well. So this is the ink I chose. It has ITF, which I really like, and I think it could be a nice color to go into that bowling pin pen. I got a whole gemstone collection, 10 inks. I haven't really used them like I should, so I'm starting to. The bottles come sealed with this nice shrink wrapped over the cap, keeps them very fresh and here's that description and there's your colors I think it's uh, a good combination I've been happy with my uh, Monteverdi inks 
don't have a lot, but the ones I have, I enjoy. It's not the easiest bottle to open. I had to put a rubber lobster band around it. Eventually, I got the lid to come off. A nice color. So those of you that are not fans of aerometric fillers, let me show you what I do. I take off this sleeve because it doesn't help in my mind. And there is a breather tube in there, which is what we would expect with this type of design. So you just insert it in there. And this way you can see how it, the ink comes up that breather tube. And it takes a number of squeezes to fill up the sack. But you're going to get a full fill. <laughs> what that means in this very small bladder, probably 0.4 mil or something in that range. As you saw in the writing sample, this is the ink that I used that was very light. So I did it a color card using my glass nib pen and the ink works fine there. Get some interesting shading. I like the color, but it certainly doesn't work well in the bowling pin pen. So now on to editorial comments and a little more writing. So to me, the best and only feature that I like about the pen is you can stand it up of course, this surface isn't flat enough for it to stand up, but yes, here it is standing up. So let's cut right to the chase. Before we do anything else, how do I rate this pen? Stay tuned. It's a 0, 0.0. It gets no checks. It's just a 0 not worth anything in my mind. Let's continue on. But wait, much to my amazement, I found the pen on eBay. And actually, it's being sold by a seller in the United States. So if you really want one, you can find it. I'll put a link to this auction in the video description. So when I was reading the description of this pen on eBay, they said you pull on the section to extend the pen, and wow, look, you can get another inch. And now it actually fits in the hand. Still doesn't change my rating, but I have to admit I wouldn't have thought about doing that if I didn't read that description. I'm glad I did. And there's even a little bit of a print on that extension. In case you forget, it's a bowling pen. Still not something that I could write with for any length of time, but it's just for making marks for bowling scores. Maybe it works for that. So you may ask, why is this rating zero? So I've spent some time with this pen now because COVID knocked me out for a little bit. I don't think this is a usable pen as a writing instrument. As a novelty, I think it's great. I think it's cute. I think it's well made, but not a good writing instrument. And yes, it's still inked up. And the nib does stay wet. But even after you pull it out, it's still very short. And this is a sharp edge, extremely sharp right here. And if you go down here, then it becomes very, very tiny. So, And you can't avoid feeling that sharp edge. So it's just not a writing instrument. Henceforth, it rates a zero in my book. For those that are interested, here's the dimensions. As you could probably tell from the design, it doesn't post. And considering how small this pen is in the hand, the fact that it doesn't post limits its use to almost zero. Its sections as small as they can get, and it's a nice shiny, slippery chrome finish on it. And that tiny nib puts down a very tiny amount of ink. Hence, the rating. So we're not going to go to any more writing. Uh, the nib is okay. There's a fair amount of feedback, but with a nib this fine, you would expect to get a fair amount of feedback. And this uh, Fabriano paper has a little bit of texture to it, so you feel it. So we're ready to wrap up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a 
novelty pen, to put it mildly. So thank all of you for watching. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens. And if this is one that you are interested in, I have no idea on how to find it or buy it. You know, do a search on bowling pin and whatever buying location you have for Chinese pens and maybe you'll find it, maybe you won't. I think this is not worth looking for. So we've come to the end. May you find a pen you like better than this one. Should be easy to do. Bye.